हेलो ओके सॉरी हे गाइस आई एम अभिजीत प्रेजेंटली वर्किंग एज अ सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर इन द कस्टमर ऑफिशन टीम एट उबर सो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द न्यू एसिंक आई इंटरफेस इन लिनक्स व्हिच वाज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन कर्नल वर्जन 5 5.1 वेलकम एवरीवन आई होप दैट दिस टॉक इज एन एनलाइटनिंग सेशन एंड वी गेट टू लर्न फ्यू थिंग्स अबाउट द इंटरफेस दैट वाज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन द रीसेंट वर्जन ऑफ द कर्नल uh i have to move to the next slide Uh, I'm trying to go to the next slide, although I'm not being able to. Yeah. So first, we'll talk about existing I/O interfaces in Linux for doing file I/O. Then we will discuss about I/O Uring, uh, which is the main focus of this talk. We'll also talk about a libc library called liburing. we'll also discuss about system calls specifically that are been added in this interface their examples various options they provide uh, we'll discuss about the performance of the interface along with the observability and debugging aspects of iowing interface lastly we'll converse about the internals and its adoption across the industry so uh, i'm having a bit of an issue in, in uh, going to the next slide yeah so yeah so let's talk about let's talk about uh, the basics so we we have we have a basic uh, system call uh, read that is if you want to read any kind of file be it a socket be it a, a file on the disk be it a pipe uh, we can issue this read system call and we can get that file so what happens here is that uh, it is uh, for regular files that is files residing on the disk it uh, it if the requested pages of the files or the blocks are in page cache then it is fetched and returned if not it fetches the data from the disk and then uh blocks before returning to the user so the user call uh, to the disk is blocked till the data returns uh if the file of of course this is with exceptions that if the file is not opened with o non block flags let's say we have opened the file with o non block flag uh then uh depending on the file this call might block or not so for regular files uh the o non block flag Uh, does not work so even with o non block flag it will block but for sockets pipes and character devices uh if we open the file via o non block mode then uh the read system call will give an error until that uh data is ready for reading uh next slide please okay so let's here we have an example of how the uh, flow works for making a read call in a file in let's say an ext4 file system so let's say we issue a read call we uh, have the system uh, we have we have we go by this uh, syscall interface we issue this uh, we issue the series of uh, calls in the kernel and uh, what what happens ultimately is that the user is kept waiting uh, or the application is kept waiting Uh, till the data is fetched from the disk and then it is returned so
Ja. I'm trying to issue the animations here. So we see that the whole call chain is being uh, is being called here. We issue the sysread call read. The kernel goes through all the series of these calls and then returns back data to the user while it is kept waiting uh, for, let's say, a simple file that is being read from the disk. Now let's discuss write. There are free, uh, is if there are free, uh, free pages available in the kernel or not. So if there are no free pages available in the kernel, this call might block. If there are free pages, then uh, it, 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 it will succeed without blocking. Uh, this is true even for uh, O non-block non flags, uh, o no, uh, files opened with O non-block flag. So let's say if you have a socket or a character device or any kind of pipe, the write will uh, block until the data is ready for writing. Uh, but if we use the O non-block flag, it won't block and it will throw an error until the data is, uh, until uh, the file descriptor is ready for writing. Next slide, please. So that so uh, let's let's talk about uh, how what what are the present what are the present uh, interfaces existing in Linux uh, or in general. So the POSIX async interface is something that we should discuss. Uh, this async interface is actually implemented in libc glibc, and how it implements the asynchronous nature of uh, read and write calls is that it maintains thread pulls thread pools for offloading any kind of blocking calls. So let's say if you want to do any uh, a reads, uh, a read operation over a, a buffered file residing on a disk or let's, let's say residing uh, on a block device, then uh, uh, we can use this library and it will basically offload, uh, offload the task to a background thread. And that's how it can uh, become a non-blocking interface. So, but we have issues with this interface. Its implementation is non-uniform across different architectures and its performance also can be improved. Next slide. So, uh, they, they, we have to talk about a flag called uh, odirect. Uh, with this flag, we, if we use this flag when we are issuing system calls, uh, let's say read or write, we can make this call non-blocking for files residing on disk, that is regular files. So the problems that we are having is mostly with regular files because as you have seen that the normal system call of read and write will be, will you know, can be made asynchronous if we use uh, sockets or pipes or character devices. But if we are using regular, system, uh, regular files or, you know, files residing on disk, uh, which, which, have to, which have to pass through the page cache, then, uh, then we are having problems that the call is blocking. So uh, if we use this flag, uh, which means that we don't want to use the page cache at all. So if we use this flag and if, if we also use libAIO interface, which we'll discuss later, then uh, this call can be made non-blocking. So this flag helps us in issuing uh, reads or writes uh, via the libAIO interface, which are non-blocking. So this also uh, is one of the uh, flags that we should be aware about apart from the existing interfaces. The next slide, please. So uh, the current ways, how do we achieve? So we, we obviously have a lot of uh, uh, code, a lot of uh, applications out there who are, who are using, who are, who, are, who are doing reads and write databases, everything, everything that we mostly use in Linux goes through these uh, these system calls. So how do we do it currently for asynchronous uh, nature of this? 
to achieve asynchronous nature. So we use IOT multiplex interfaces. So we have the select interface, ePoll or poll interface. What what we can you what we how we leverage them is that uh, so these interfaces provide us system calls like ePoll wait or like poll or like select. So what the system calls do basically is check if the file descriptor that we are interested in is ready for reading or writing. So they basically check that okay if the file descriptor is ready then yes your read can proceed without blocking or if your file descriptor is ready for writing then your write can proceed before blocking. So with the help of uh, these system calls we can have asynchronous nature uh, we can check the readiness and uh, then uh, readiness of the file descriptor and then issue our reads and writes call. So uh, does it does it uh, does it uh, solve the issue of uh, reading for buffered files? Uh, no, it doesn't because uh, because this files uh, let's say the files which reside on disk are always considered uh, readable and writable. So poll or select or any of these interfaces won't work. So if we if we operate if we operate uh, uh, using let's say any kind of uh, uh, interfaces like select ePoll or poll uh, these these they, these interfaces won't help us to achieve asynchrony because uh, they are these files are always considered readable or writable uh, because uh, Linux in general considers disk as something in which latency uh, in which a result is guaranteed. So although there is latency, but the result is guaranteed. So these, these type of files are always considered readable or writable because they're always ready for reading and writing. The readiness checks don't work. And that's why these system calls will say that uh, your file descriptor is ready for reading or writing and hence your call can proceed. So, but, but we still have to block because the, uh, so, uh, because these files are residing on disk and they have to be fetched from the disk. But, uh, you know, uh, the, these are always considered ready because they are on disk. Other than that, if let's say, if it's a file descriptor on, on a socket, then, uh, then until the data comes on the socket or until the, until the socket buffer is uh, available for writing, uh, the readiness checks won't be uh, uh, won't be firing uh, let's say unless the event occurs unless the readiness events occur they don't uh, so the readiness events don't work uh, nicely for buffered files and that's why even using these uh, interfaces we can't achieve true asynchrony for uh, regular files next slide please So lib AIO interface. Uh, so again, this is uh, this is an interface uh, that is uh, that is that is again uh, a native Linux interface. Basically, what it consists of is essentially three system calls. So the first system call is IO setup. So what it does it it basically sets it initializes the metadata. It initializes the uh, unique instance for this uh, IO operation. Then you submit. Uh, then you submit the uh, IO operations using IO submit system call and we can issue multiple read and write requests using the system call. And uh, then finally, we have the final one, which is IO get events to synchronously wait for these set of requests. So all the operations that we, uh, IO operations that we issued uh, uh, using IO submit system call, we will have to wait for all of them uh, via the IO get events system call and the IO get events system call is a blocking system call, but the IO submit system call is actually a non blocking call. So uh, does it solve the problem of regular uh, buffered file IO? Yes, uh, uh, it does solve the problem of uh, 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 regular unbuffered files, but regular buffered files still block. So this is the this is the interface which we are talking about before that if we open the file descriptors with o non block flag and if we issue the uh, io uh, uh, request using this interface uh, we, it won't block because it will bypass the page cache and uh, it will it will issue the calls asynchronously but if we do not use, do not open the flag with that interface uh, with sorry with that uh, if we do not open the files with that flag then this interface will also block 
so we're talking about uh, io submit calls uh, you know uh, blocking for uh, file descriptors on upon which we want to issue read or write operations so still it's i think it's a neat way of achieve, achieving batching of multiple io requests and uh, as far as i uh, as far as i uh, learned about it uh, it is slated to be the default uh, posix io backend in the future next slide please So now we come to the IO Euring interface. Uh, you know, uh, so this let's talk talk about it quickly. Uh, this uh, interface was developed by Jen Axpo from Facebook. It was added in Linux 5.1. We have three system calls in uh, in this interface: uh, IO Euring register, IO Euring enter, uh, and sorry, uh, IO Euring. Uh, the last one is setup. I think so. This there's not correct data here. So I ring setup is the third system call. Uh, basically, we have two ring buffers or circular arrays, which are shared by both kernel and user. So these uh, circular buffers or uh, ring buffers are essentially used by user space to communicate with the kernel. So this is very unique uh, in 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 in, in uh, as per what I have seen because normally when we issue a system call we we you know uh, initialize some initialize a pointer to the data we we uh, uh, initialize the metadata and we issue a system call but here we are using uh, ring buffers to actually communicate with the kernel which is quite interesting and it is uh, it is quite unique to this interface. Uh, so, uh, 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 so using this, uh, using these uh, circular uh, buffers, we basically submit our IO requests and we also uh, uh, look at completion of those IO requests. Next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, I believe uh, if we click, we can see how these ring buffers are uh, operating. It's an animation, so we have to click. Okay, so uh, I have I have got a I have got a few questions here. Uh, let me let me let me answer the questions if I can. So uh, Praveen's question is that what about uh, AFXDP, which is a similar system call interface. So as as per as uh, as per as my knowledge, uh, uh, AFXDP flag is being used to uh, is is being used to uh, do XDP net networking via the BPF interface. So if we op op if we open sockets, if we have to open sockets, uh, then we use that flag to uh, open a raw socket and then we do the XDP networking. So uh, I'm not sure if uh, the AFXDP uh, interface, uh, sorry, flag uses the similar interface. I, I, I do not think so, but yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, I have a, I have a next question uh, from Fong. Uh, hi, Fong. Uh, what is the question? Uh, can you can you state please? Okay, so I, I think I'm not getting I'm not getting uh, any answers from Fong. We can come back to it later. But let's let's see let's see about this slide. Uh, let's continue with the slide. Uh, so we have we, we we here see two ring buffers here. One is the submission queue, and another is the completion queue. And we see we see seven uh, submission queue entries here. So uh, the user has initialized seven uh, submission queue entries and he has populated or the user has populated the submission queue with these entries. Now, after populating the submission queue, uh, yeah, so we have some animation here. So basically the, with the, with the queue, you consistently update the tail of the queue. So you, the, the user space app updates the submission queue uh, and keeps on adding SQE to the circular ring buffer. After this has been done, then the user issues a IO Euring enter system call. So this is the main system call that indicates the kernel that, hey, uh, we have a few entries in the submission queue ring and please read those entries and please uh, complete the operations that are corresponding to those entries. So after the kernel, uh, after this, after the kernel knows about it, the kernel comes into picture and starts reading all the SQs. 
So one by n, it will read the head of this ring buffer. So it keeps on reading the head of the circular array, that is the submission queue, and then it will issue the IO operation for each of the submission queue entry. And then finally, when the IO operation is complete, it will go to the completion queue and then start populating the completion queue uh, ring buffer. So the completion queue ring buffer will then have uh, all the completion queue events. And then the user can start reading uh, via, so the user can in the backgrounds uh, keep uh, reading the completion queue. So it's asynchronous in that the user can independently uh, fill up the submission queue, issue a call, uh, uh, sorry, okay, uh, yeah. I got a message from Fuang. Uh, he, he just wanted to say hi to me. Sorry, uh, Fuang, I was expecting a question. Sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I was telling that the user uh, user app can update, uh, uh, keep adding SQE entries to the submission queue ring. Uh, and then the kernel reads, that uh, reads the entries from the submission queue ring. And then the kernel, when after the completion of each and every IO operation updates the completion queue ring, which the user reads. So these, these both submission and completion are decoupled, which results in asynchrony. So the user space uh, application can independently, you know, keep reading the submission, uh, keep uh, filling the submission queue and uh, uh, asynchronously also uh, reading the completion queue for the completion of the events. Next slide, please. So discussing about it in general, so this interface provides true asynchrony for all operation types. So if you're talking about storage networking, if you're talking about uh, uh, storage or networking, then uh, any kind of operations are handled here. Uh, we also need to talk about uh, the SQL, SQ poll mode, which is very interesting because we do not have to enter and we do not have to make any system call if we use this flag. So we'll discuss about it later, but uh, you know we'll just discuss briefly about it now. That uh, we we can completely bypass the kernel and issue all our I/O operations, and which 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 helps us in not making any context switches at all. So this 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 can really transform the way that we interact with the kernel for making I/O operations. Uh, next next slide, please. So here, uh, here you know, uh, I just presented an example of uh, the SQ poll mode in which you can run IO Uring interface. And in this mode, uh, there are animations here. In this mode, the user space app just fills the submission queue entries in the submission queue ring buffer. Uh, they basically just update the tail and then the kernel Async, uh, the kernel creates a background thread and the background thread polls for any entries that come in the submission queue and then uh, reads the, all the entries and then basically performs the IO operations and then fills the completion queue with the completion with the with the completion events. The kernel is uh, eagerly creating a background thread and then processing all the requests which are without having the user space application to make a system call. Uh, so that is that is the that is the difference between uh, this mode and the normal mode. So in this mode, there is no system call as we are seeing. It can it can operate without without that. Next slide, please. So uh, discussing again uh, about uh, so apart from read and write operations, it has support for uh, send, receive, open, close, connect, f stack, f allocate. So all this all the system calls that we normally make that we somehow interact uh, somehow do an IO operation here. Uh, all these operations are supported. So let's say if you want to uh, if you want to issue a connect operation and if you want to connect to a socket, we can do that. Uh, we can do a read. We can do a send. We can do a uh, receive. So uh, we do not, we, we normally, we do not use uh, the system calls that have been provided to us by this interface directly. Uh, we, we can though, but it's uh, a helper library has been uh, made available to us to use, uh, to leverage the system calls. Uh, 
the helper library is liburing and this library uh, provides us several functions that we can use to avoid the complexity of uh, the uh, ring buffer management and uh, uh, ring buffer management of the submission and, and completion queue. So again, uh, one thing that we we should we should uh, we should take note of is the both uh, both the submission and completion queue are shared by user space and kernel so those the the ring buffers that uh, that uh, that were that were used for communication between the user space and kernel are being shared by both of them so we do not make any copies uh, we do not make any copies of data while we are transferring the request from uh, user space to kernel so there is significant amount of savings in copying data also, because the uh, I/O operations itself are unpredictable, so we cannot guarantee the uh, order of submission and completion requests. So, the, if let's say we issue some submission requests in order, the completion uh, events for those requests might not be in order because they are all asynchronous. So, depending on which of which one of which one of uh, which ones of them complete first we'll have the completion queue events for each of those I operations. Yeah, performance wise, uh, lastly, yeah, performance wise, we have, uh, we, we, we have seen a good performance. We have seen a much better performance from IO hearing interface than uh, compared to previous interface phases. Uh, we'll discuss, we'll see, look at the performance numbers. Uh, although uh, there are, there are uh, quite, quite, Quite some resources there, which point that I/O Euring is performing really well in 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 at least in buffered reads in uh, in in normal use cases where we are doing reads and writes call. Also in networking cases, let's say where we are trying to uh, run a server. So uh, yeah, performance wise, it's also good. So let's look at uh, design with similarity. Circular buffers, as we know are an elegant design pattern, elegant data structure. Why? Because they have back pressure built in. So you do not, you do, it's not like a linked list where you can keep adding entries. There's a fixed size to it. So your memory is bounded, your memory is reusable and your uh, back pressure is built in. So let's say if, you're, if your uh, ring size is full, then you won't accept any entry from the user space application. So, so reverse is true for the kernel as well when kernel is filling the completion queue, uh, completion queue ring buffer. So when the completion queue ring buffer is full, uh, the kernel will have to wait. So the back pressure is built in. Also, ring buffers are used uh, ubiquitously. For example, in networking, we use ring buffers where uh, the socket, the socket entries. Uh, socket buffers, we, when we create them in Linux after getting them through the networking driver, the memory is bounded. So it, it's a ring buffer which keeps on which keeps on being reused for the sockets which are being uh, allocated and freed continuously as we as the networking layer processes those, those packets. Uh, Microsoft Windows uh, uses IOCP as the traditional IO stack, which is the IO completion ports, which is similar in design to uh, I/O ring as it also uses uh, ring buffers, which is a generic asynchronous I/O interface for Windows. So Windows has something similar, which also is uh, which also provides asynchronous uh, interface for making uh, I/O operations. Next slide, please. So. <laughs> The first set of calls uh, that was wrongly mentioned in, in, in one of the previous slides is IO Ring setup. So this is basically to create an IO instance, a unique IO instance, uh, IO Ring instance that we can uh, that we can will be using in the system calls after this. So basically, we provide the number of uh, number of entries we want to make, the number number of entries uh, that the number of operations we want to IO operations we want to make, and some parameters. So in these parameters, most importantly are the flags. Uh, next slide, please. So most of the entries here, if we populate the flags, most of the entries here will be populated by the kernel itself. So you know, flags uh, uh, is uh, the, something that we discussed SQ poll mode. Here we can configure the IO instance to be to start from uh, SQ poll mode. And we can also configure it from IO poll mode. So in the IO poll mode, uh, 
the application uh, has to poll the kernel for any kind of completion events. So normally the application just needs to read the completion queue events, but events from the completion queue. But if we use this flag, then we'll have to, the application will have to poll the kernel for any kind of completions. Use it. Uh, we initialize, we initialize a struct of IO ring params, and then we, uh, using some using using uh, some checks, we can initialize the flags that if you want to use uh, IO setup IO poll mode, or if you set up if you want to use SQ poll mode, and if we do not use any of these modes, it's also completely fine. We then issue the system call where uh, we want to initialize our IO ring instance for hundred entries and uh, some parameters that we've initialized. Next slide, please. Yeah, the submission. So let's talk about the SQE uh, struct here. So this, so when we talk about uh, so the submission queue ring buffers, uh, it is filled with it is filled with instances of these structs. So each entry of the submission queue ring buffer is an instance of this struct. So if we look at the fields that are used here, uh, the opcode is what specifies which operation we want to perform. Do we want to perform a read or a write or a send or a receive, connect, close, accept, whatever. So flags is something that we'll discuss later on. IO priority or IO prio is basically to indicate if we can prioritize this request. Uh, file descriptor or FD is something that, which, what is the FD that you want to do the operation upon. Uh, the other fields are also kind of metadata related to the submission, submission entry. The user data field, is something that we that the user provides. So let's say if we issue a read operation, then we want some buffer upon which the kernel can write the response of that read request to. So the user data is actually that. So this is what is passed to the completion queue entry as well, and the user can read this data completely. So we also see a few flags here that are uh, that are for that are uh, that are for each operation. So uh, you know you have some flags for uh, f sync. You have some flags for accept, cancel. So these are per operation flags. Uh, so that is that. So let's move to the next slide. We will discuss how we initialize this. Uh, previous slide, yeah. So uh, this is a bit complex uh, as from the code that we can see. Not, not I mean, not a lot, but yeah, somewhat. So we basically, because it's a ring buffer, we know that there are lots of, uh, there, there are head and tail. We know that we have some few flags and we also keep some metadata around uh, the dropped or some metadata around, around the offset. So here basically what we're doing is we are creating a shared memory space between the user and the kernel. And then we are initializing the metadata, metadata around head and tail entries. And finally, we are uh, we are uh, after the having after having all this metadata, we are uh, we are we are complete with our submission queue entry struct. Next slide, please. So now this is the completion queue entry. This is uh, so basically uh, for for the completion queue ring buffer we have each. Uh, entry uh, of that ring buffer is an instance of this struct. So in this struct, we have uh, three fields and it's pretty simple as compared to the submission queue entry struct where we have user data, which is again the same thing that I pointed before. That is the address at which the kernel can populate data of, uh, of populate the re result data. So after after the uh, completion of any I/O event, whatever the result was of that I/O event, the kernel can populate the result of that I/O event in this in this uh, in this field. Result uh, res or result is used to indicate if uh, if the flag uh, so sorry it was to indicate if the I/O operation was successful or not. So that is that is indicator of if this operation was successful. Flags is something that uh, that that is used to signal that which buffer was used for submission. So we'll talk about again these, uh, this flag later on. Let's move ahead. So here we see, uh, here we try to initialize a completion queue entry. 
So here again, this it's very similar to submission queue entry where we do an M map and we we just uh, we just uh, update a few metadata fields, uh, uh, mostly head, tail, and some metadata around the completion queue. Uh, overall, uh, what what we are trying to do here is uh, that uh, we are trying to uh, study the submission queue entry struct and initialize the metadata around the struct uh, around uh, and the completion queue struct. Next slide, please. Tell the kernel that we have a few submission queue entries we want during entry call. So this is the uh, system call that is used by the application to issue and wait for an IO request. So uh, here I have used the word wait for an IO request, but it's not necessary. So uh, uh, normally. Uh, if you indicate via the flags that has been used in the parameter, so this IO ring enter call you has five parameters, the file descriptor first of them, the two submit second of them, min complete flags and sync. So in flags, you have two flags that we want to talk about, IO ring enter get events and IO ring enter SQ wake up. So if you use the first flag, it means that we want to wait for min complete number of events to be in the completion queue till this call is complete. So this call will block until there are min complete uh, IO completions. So if let's say if we pass min complete as three and if we uh, set this flag as true in the bit set, then it will wait for three IO operations to complete and then only after that it will return. So if we do not use this flag, it's not necessary that uh, it, 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 will, it will, it won't block and this will complete. So IO ring enter SQ wake up is a flag that we use uh, to signal the kernel to wake up and start polling again. So normally uh, when we use the SQ, uh, when we use IO ring in SQ poll mode, uh, the kernel creates a thread which continuously polls the submission queue ring buffer for any metadata. So any kind of entry in the submission queue ring buffer will be polled by the kernel thread. But let's say if the submission queue uh, ring buffer is quiet and there are no entries there, so then the kernel thread will start sleeping. And this uh, flag uh, is used by the user space application to indicate that, uh, that the kernel can start the background thread again. Next slide, please. So IO ring uh, register is basically to pre-register set of buffers or files which we which the user space application can later on uh, later on uh, leverage for writing or reading data. So let's say uh, if we have we if we have a file uh, descriptor the kernel will uh, want to know the file reference of it. The kernel will want to know what is the, uh, what is the buffer, what is the buffer that he wants to access to write data of the result to. So for those, for those metadata or for, for, for those, uh, for those, uh, uh, if you, if the kernel wants to do that for each and every IO operation, the kernel will have to get the file reference. Uh, the kernel will issue fget or fput calls. The kernel will also uh, try to copy the user data uh, that is that is there in the submission queue entry and then copy it back to the completion queue entry. Now, what these system call does is that it provides an option to the users user application to pre-register those buffers. Now, if they register those buffers, then the kernel will not have to copy data while uh, reading an IO in, uh, while uh, while the uh, let's say if it's processing an IO operation. So it makes uh, it makes things cheaper. So when we have read all of this, there we need to be we need to uh, summarize ourselves with the complexity that have been involved that are involved in the whole uh, in this whole thing that. Uh, we didn't discuss about one important thing that when we are when we are reading and writing to the uh, ring buffer via the submission queue entry and the completion queue entries, we want to have some kind of synchronization between the kernel and the user space. 
and that synchronization is brought by memory barriers. So all of this initialization plus synchronization is a bit complex. And then the liburing library helps to alleviate all that complexity. Next slide, please. So in so if we use the liburing uh, library that is provided by the glibs uh, that is provided by glibc, uh, we just uh, we so here, here we see how we use this library. We first issue a, a, a IO ring queue init call to get a unique IO ring instance. Then we get a submission queue entry. Then we set the submission queue entry with some data that we want to provide. And then finally we submit this IO ring operation. So that this is this is the submission part of it. Next slide, please. So then uh, we we take we take the we take the uh, ring instance that was that was given to us by the IO ring queue init call, and then we uh, with the completion queue entry that we have initialized it, we basically wait for that completion queue entry to be available, and then finally we get data from it once uh, the IO ring wait CQE call returns. So using these set of calls, uh, we have completely avoided the uh, 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 the submission queue entry initialization, uh, the uh, ring buffer initialization, uh, the synchronization between the kernel and user space, all that is completely avoided. So it becomes quite simple to use this uh, use this IO interface. But yeah, if we want to do, I think so for more control, we can still use that interface. Uh, people prefer more control, people prefer simplicity. I think so. People prefer it either ways. But yeah, this library helps uh, helps it much helps uh, help makes it much easier to use the interface. Next slide, please. So here we have an example of reading a file by a liburing interface. Uh, we so first we open the file using uh, an open system call. Then we initialize the structs that we require. So U ring interface uh, for, for IO ring struct, then uh, SQE IO rings SQE struct, then IO data uh, IO ring SQE struct. So the IO ring data uh, sorry IO data struct is something that we uh, that we uh, that we have. Uh, Initialized ourselves. This is not something that uh, that we have to do normally. So this we have initialized ourselves so that the kernel can understand it. So what we do is that we first uh, uh, issue a IO using a Q, a Q init call. Then we finally uh, then we get an SQA entry. Then we prep that. Uh, then we prep that SQA entry with the read request, and then we set the SQA with the data. Then we submit that request. And then finally, we'll wait for the completion queue entry, uh, and then finally, we'll get data once the IO ring wait CQE call has returned. So uh, we have we have made here uh, five to six calls, and we have uh, we have we have completely eliminated the complexity that was uh, associated with the previous uh, that was associated with the previous set of code. Uh, I'll I'll discuss about these flags a bit later. Let's move to the next slide here. Yeah. So we, when we saw the submission queue entry struct, we saw a few flags there. Uh, let's discuss about those flags now. So uh, the this flag, the first flag, IOSQ IO link flag. What this what it does is that what it what it does is that uh, it creates an ordering between the SQEs. So all the SQEs we uh, which which we populate in the submission queue entry, it forces all of them to be ordered, uh, not 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 asynchronously each of them. So let's say uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven, six, and ten. Uh, then we'll process first, first, second, later, third, fourth, fifth, and not each of them asynchronously. So the second flag, that is the IO SQE IO drain flag, it forces that each entry of the submission queue entry uh, submission queue ring buffer has to be processed first before the new ones have to be taken so the new ones will be taken later uh, and then uh, after the existing ones have completed so obviously this is a this is a this is a this is quite uh, drain and this 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 is actually a performance killer so the async i sqv async flag uh, uh, using this flag we can the uh, the i ring uh, the kernel will straight away uh, offload this operation, the IO operation, to a kernel thread right from the start. 
So right from the start, you have a background thread which takes care of all this, and you don't, you don't, the kernel does not rely upon uh, page callback mechanisms or uh, page callback mechanisms or interrupt-driven behavior to signal I/O completion. Next slide, please. So we have discussed these flags, IO, IO poll and IO SQ poll uh, uh, flags. So using this, the second flag is quite interesting as I discussed that we, the user space application does not need to make any system call here. Uh, it can directly uh, 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 populate the uh, submission queue ring buffer and the kernel will create a background thread that will read entries from the submission queue ring buffer and populate the results of them to the completion queue ring buffer. In the IO, uh, using the IO poll uh, flag, uh, the application will have to poll for any completions uh, using the IOU ring entry system call. So normally this is done by applications to have low latency. So we have other flags uh, which I'll, I'll skip, but yeah, uh, I think uh, we, we can read about it, but yeah, I think I'll skip here. So I, ha I have a few minutes left. Uh, so let's let's go to performance the size which we discussed about performance. Yeah. So let's discuss about the performance aspects of it. Uh, on, on AWS and EC2, I bench, I, I, I had, uh, I, I made, uh, I connected a performance benchmark of uh, using FIO. So it was an M5B large X, uh, instance with uh, X86, 64, uh, there was two, there were two uh, vcpus 8 gb of physical memory uh, it was in uh, the storage was uh, 75 gb of non volatile memory uh, the kernel version was 5.4 uh, 5.4.0 it was uh, it was uh, the operating system was going to 20.04 uh, we 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 have io iops and bandwidth benchmarks and the io q depth use was 16 although uh, higher IO, higher q lengths were also uh, indicating same performance so let's look at the numbers. Yeah. So the green one is for uh, is for uh, blocks which are of four kilobytes, red from red being read from the disk, and the red ones are for the blocks which are of eight kilobytes being read from the disk. These are all. Uh, so one thing I forgot to mention was these are all random read operations being done for uh, a file on the disk. So before any uh, before any uh, benchmark result, we uh, I had to uh, clean the I had to flush the caches. So I know entry page caches all everything was flushed. And normally we were doing a random read operation upon the file in disk. Uh, uh, that file size were 4 GB as we saw in the previous slide. I have I have a few questions now uh, uh, that have that have come to me. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll I'll try to answer them later. So please bear with me. Sorry. So in the previous slide we saw that uh, for direct I/O. Sorry. Can you can you go uh, go back to the previous slide? Yeah. So, the previous one again. Yeah, so we see in these benchmarks that for direct IO, uh, for, uh, for direct IO, if you want to bypass the page cache, the IO ring instances uh, uh, is comparable in, uh, or better than performance uh, of amongst all the engines, but lib IO is comparably fares well. So this is true for both block sizes, eight kilobytes and four kilobytes. And we have we have compared POSIX AIO and, and the sync. Sync is normally reads and write system call. If we issue reads and write system call, uh, then sync we use sync for that in FIO. So this is for direct. Uh, this is for a direct uh, a direct a direct uh, access to files, which means that we want to bypass the page cache. Uh, the second. Let's go to the next slide. In the buffer, so this is basically uh, we are measuring IOPS when we want to use a page cache. 
and we see that lib io is clearly slower here because lib io is will prove uh, will actually not will prove useless because lib io is not asynchronous for buffered files it is asynchronous only for files which are opened with o direct flag so here we see io ring clearly winning in iops uh, than lib io posix or the sync interface next slide please uh, bandwidth wise again numbers are pretty similar that for direct io uh, uh, the numbers for io ring and lib io look, look similar but uh, you know posix and sync are still uh, slower uh, so i, I have i have uh, it's saying that i have a couple of minutes i'll just rush to the slides uh, next next slide please so for buffered io we see that io ring bandwidth is clearly uh, clearly uh, better than all the interfaces next slide please so uh, observations here that io ring is performing well uh, the instance that i used was bound by cpu uh, but not by uh, the uh, disk bandwidth because uh, the nvme would nvm not volatile memory uh, storage could not be saturated but the cpu uh, cpu utilization was exceeded 100% so we needed more cpus to test the true performance but what uh, what results what 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 we can observe here is that even with limited cpu uh, i ring fares uh, fares much better than other interfaces for uh, bandwidth and iops next slide please so debugging and observe so we have we have a few uh, static trace points that have been added in the interface uh, these static in trace points using these stack uh, static trace points, what we can do is we can use uh, BCC or BPF trace or we can use uh, modern debugging, uh, Linux de debugging tools to actually uh, uh, measure what is the latency or what is, uh, if, if let's say, if an I operation is submitted but not completed, if an I operation is indeed submitted, we can measure uh, all these things using these trace points that have been listed here. Next slide, please. So here is an example of using BPF trace for measuring latency, uh, where we are putting uh, trace points uh, using the submit SQ trace point and the completion SQ trace point. Next slide, please. Uh, I wanted to talk about internal mechanics, but I think uh, we are short of time. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, let's try to go to the uh, adoption slide. Yeah, I think so. This, I think so. Let's discuss about this. Uh, so yeah, uh, RocksDB, uh, RocksDB is using IO rings in uh, in its backend. Uh, there have been significant improvements in the multi-read queries using this uh, using IO ring as the backend. LibEV, which is uh, which is which is a library for applications to leverage the event loop, uh, might be using IO ring as the backend. So yeah, uh, I think this is uh, this is uh, this is what I, I, I could have discussed in this time frame. Sorry for uh, rushing through the slides. Uh, big thank you to these two folks who reviewed all these slides and uh, uh, made several comments about the content of these slides and helped me improve on these slides. Uh, Jens also is the author, is the author of the interface. Uh, I'll try to answer questions now that have that have come from the people. So the first, I'll, 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 uh, so William has a William has a question. William Lavender has a question. Will you be putting your slides on the ELC website? Yes. Uh, uh, answering question from Steve: uh, What interval does the IO during K thread uh, use in SQ poll mode? Is the thread uh, triggered by dirting the of the submission queue page? Yes. Uh, the second part is true. Uh, which is uh, which is uh, let's say if the submission uh, if the submission queue ring buffer is if there is an entry in the submission queue ring buffer the kernel thread will start processing that entry. Uh, I'm not I'm, I do not have knowledge of the interval, so I, I, I'll have to read more about that. Could send file use this IO inter so uh, so uh, I, I'm getting message that I'll have to uh, uh, say goodbye to all of you folks. Uh, thank you for uh, having having me. Thank you for uh, listening to this talk. Uh, yeah, I, I'll I'll answer all the questions in the uh, in the in asynchronously, and uh, please feel to ask feel, please feel free to ask me any questions. I'll share this I'll share this set of slides with in the ELC website as well. Thank you, thank you guys.